place, we still have more time, right? So I'm not saying the year's done or anything like that, uh, but just kind of going over some things and revealing a theme and kind of a plan in whenever I reveal a theme as a church, you can look at that and go, oh, that's pastor's plan for preaching. Uh, because you preach about a theme and kind of try to help us learn some things together um, as a church. And so if you would, maybe you're here and you've not been through one of these with us before, and I've had people ask me, why do you have Vision Sunday? And I'll actually give you some biblical reasons why I have Vision Sunday. So take your Bible, turn to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, and we're going to look at a couple verses here, because as you look throughout the Bible, God has always clearly given a vision of what he wants his people to accomplish, doesn't he? It's, it was very clear what the role of Israel was, wasn't it? When they came out of captivity, it was to go into the promised land and capture it, right? Did they carry out that vision? Not really. Like, they, they sort of half-hearted did it, you know, and then as you, as you go throughout the Bible and you read different passages of Scripture, um, God will reveal things to people, and, and they were to preach them, and, and I'm not saying that, well, God revealed to me a vision for this year, for, you know, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, and then as you go into the local church in the New Testament, and you go into the book of Acts, would you say that God had a clear vision what the local church should be and what it should accomplish? 100%. And then you get into like the book of Acts, and you get into about, you know, chapter uh, 13, and, and you get another clear vision because it lists the number of people, and God says, separate me, these two, for the work of the ministry, and they were sent out as what we would call missionaries, correct? Uh, Paul and Barnabas, and then down the road, it, they, they kind of split because they had a disagreement over John Mark because... John Mark quit on the first journey, and on the second journey, John Mark at the start was like, let's go again. And Paul had been the typical person who's been in the ministry a while. He'd been burned a few times. He was sick of quitters, right? And he said basically to Barnabas, I don't take quitters with me. He's not coming. And Barnabas, if you study out the Bible, was sort of, we, 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 we think he was kind of like John Mark's uncle, they were related, and he kind of went to bat for him, and Paul was like, I don't care what you say, he's not coming. And then it turned out to Barnabas being, well, if he's not coming, I'm not coming. And then Barnabas ended up grabbing John Mark, and they went out on a missionary journey, and Paul grabbed Silas, and they went out on a missionary journey. But guess what? That meant the missionary efforts of the church doubled. I mean, I'm not for disagreements aren't always necessary, but can God work even in our own human frailties? 100%. All right, so Habakkuk chapter 2, we'll look at verse uh, 1 and verse 2. And uh, Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see. What he will stand to me, and what shall I answer when I am reproved? So it's kind of, I always find that verse kind of funny because, like, Habakkuk is like, I'm just going to wait for the Lord to talk to me, and I'm going to listen to him. And he kind of, doesn't he kind of give the idea, that, and I know he's going to reprove me because I'm in the wrong. And I listen to when I'm reproved. Yeah, but isn't that a good, humble spirit to take into things? Um, some people, like, you can't reprove at all. Like, if you reprove them, it's a fight. Where he was kind of like, the assumption of, if this is between me and God, God's always right, I'm wrong, he's going to reprove me when I listen, when I hear him out. And how many of you, if you're honest, if it's between you and God, God's probably right? Or should I say, forget that. God's not probably right. God's guaranteed to be right. And we just think we're right. Well, what has happened? The Lord said unto me, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets that he may run that readeth it. And so God is telling Habakkuk, I'm going to give you a vision. I want you to write it plainly, like write it down on a tablet. Now, he's not meaning the tablets that you and I would refer to today. 
Okay? If, if I were to say, write it down on a tablet, I'm going to lose some stuff. You would just grab your, your tablet, wouldn't you? And uh, some of us would have the ability to literally write it down on a tablet. Well, that's not a bad thing. It, you know, you have it. But he was more like, you know, write it down on a tablet of stone so that way it's there. Make it plain. Why? So that way people can read it. People can see it. And Habakkuk was writing a warning that when people read about what God was going to do and judge the people, they could get right and they could run from that judgment. Right? Now, in the New Testament, we're all told that we are running a race. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Where you know, there's so great a cloud of witnesses that walk, they're watching down as we run a race. And all throughout the New Testament, Paul uses the analogy of the Christian life being a race. And now we're not talking a 100-meter dash. We're talking the marathon, like the long one. The one that, you know, so I have, uh, I have good friends that like to run. And, um, you know, Brother Paulie, when he was here, when he was with us, that, that man gets up, like, before the sun or around the sun and goes running. And I remember when he was staying at my house, he said to me, would you like to run with me? And I said, no, thank you. And he said, but we could fellowship. I'm like, when you get back, let's go for a cuppa. We, we can fellowship. And he goes, but it's good to run. I'm like, no. The book of Proverbs says, the wicked man fleeth when no man pursueth. Therefore, I have book, chapter, verse, why I don't run. Because no one's pursuing me. Now, if I'm playing sports and someone's pursuing me, yes, I'll run for that. But I'll probably kill over and die afterwards, you know. Um, and we laughed about it. But spiritually speaking, we're in, a, we're in a race. We're in a run, a race. And if you're running a race, what do you need? You need a clear course. You need a clear lane that you're running in. And generally, when you're running a race, you need to stay in your lane, right? So what we're about to talk about, this is for our church, for our lane, for our race. You say, but, but what about such and such a place? I don't know what they're doing. That's their race, and that's their lane. And, and if they have a vision, they, they have that. And that that's cool. But as a church, we're going to look at some things and say, hey, let's lay this down and let's, let's kind of go on our course and let's do more in next year, Lord willing, should he tarry his coming, than we've ever done this year or before, right? Some of you are looking at me like, I don't know about that. It's okay, all right? So that being said, take your Bible, turn to the book of Colossians. Now, as you're aware, this year, um, our, our theme has been stand firm, right? And we even made a little bit of an acrostic of the word firm, and we talked about standing firm in our faith in the first three months of the year. Our messages were based on that, and, and that's what we looked at is standing firm in our faith. And then uh, we were talking about standing firm and the I in our intercession. And so we, we spoke for about three months about prayer and interceding and and what that looks like, and how we can improve in our prayer life, and, and things of that nature. And then we talked about being firm in our rejoicing. That's why we've been looking at the book of Philippians. Uh, if you want to talk about joy and rejoicing, there's no better book than the book of Philippians. And so we've been looking at that. Hopefully that's been able to be a help to you, uh, because I don't know, maybe some of you are, but some of us aren't. I am not naturally a joyful person. Some people are. Like, some people are happy about everything. And me, it takes a lot to make me mad, and it takes really a lot to make me really happy. I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm here. You know, you know what I mean? Everyone's different, right? So have you ever met some people that are like, man, they are just all, like, all my friends used to call my mom the Energizer Bunny. You know, that little thing that just keeps going and going and going and going and going and going and going. Uh, but even after a while, the Energizer Bunny's batteries run out. I'll tell you that. Because my, my mom's now like, uh, like, Mom, aren't you always doing something? She goes, yeah, I'm just not there anymore. And I'm like, okay, why not? And so we have these long conversations, and it's, it's really neat. But like, everyone wears out eventually. So we were talking about our rejoicing and how to be joyful 
no matter what you're going through. Because joy is not based in our circumstances. Joy is based in our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Happiness can be based on your circumstances, but you can be going through difficult things in life and still be joyful. And so that's what we were trying to emphasize there. And then now this last part of the year, we've been talking about rejoicing in our mission and what God has called us to do. And so we had our missions emphasis month and we've been looking at that and uh, we've been seeing how we can get involved in those types of things and and we've been challenging ourselves in that way all right so mission now what are we going to look at next year well colossians chapter 2 look with me at verse 9 and verse 10 it says for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily speaking of jesus christ and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Do you know this morning, if you know Christ is your Savior, you're complete. You're complete. There's no missing piece. Everything you have is there. It's complete. It's in its place. Now, it may not be fully grown. It may not be fully developed. And it may not be fully understood. But the fullness of the God had bodily dwelled in Jesus Christ. And because you're in him, you are now complete. So, in the world in which we live, everyone is trying to change your identity. They are redefining of what it means to be a Christian. Hey, years ago, no one would consider anyone in the LDS church or the Mormon church to be Christian. But today, oh, that's a Christian denomination. No, it's not. It's a cult. It's not a Christian denomination. And uh, the same could be said of Jehovah's Witnesses. I've been told, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're, they're, they're Christians. No, they're not. No, they're not. Uh, they're, they're a cult, all right? Just because someone changes their identity doesn't make... Hey, and now in today's day and age, you can change your identity. You can say, I think... I could say, I think I'm a lady. I identify as a lady. Therefore, guess what? I'm not a lady. <laughs> Some of you look at me, uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I look like an ugly lady, you know, with a big beard and all that type of stuff. It doesn't matter what I identify as. There are things in me that God put in me that says, no, you are a guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's things that maybe God put in you that you are a lady. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the more we live and the more we interact with the world around us that's constantly trying to redefine us and re-give us a new identity, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to realize what is our identity. And that is going to be our theme for 2025, is identity. What does it mean to be identified as a believer in Jesus Christ? What does it mean to be complete in him? And so you say, well, I've been saved for however long. That's fine. But let me ask you this. Here's the thing that's why I went to this and been praying about this is I've asked a lot of people, you tell me you're a Christian. What does that mean? What does it mean that you identify as a Christian? And you know what I've been getting? I go to church. Wow. Wow. Good. But guess what? I walk into a car shop, doesn't mean I'm a mechanic. Right? Hey, I walk into the AV, you know, the audiovisual room back there, doesn't mean I'm a, you know, I'm an IT guy. I mean, I like to tinker, but usually when I tinker, I make more problems for myself than I, Pete, help. And Pete's like, oh, you've been messing around with this again, yes? I have a new mechanic that I've been using, and he looks at me, and this is what he says to me. He goes, when you called me to fix this, have you tried before you called me? And I said to him, no, I haven't. He goes, good, because anyone who tries before I, they call me, I charge them $25 an hour more to do the work. And I said, why? He goes, because it takes me that much longer to undo what you did just to get back to the beginning so I can actually fix the problem. So I thought, wow, I won't call him if I've tried before. Uh, but guess what? 
he's been really good. He's a good mechanic, and he does his job well, and, and, and really great guy. Uh, but I understand what he means. Do you see what I mean? Just because you identify as something doesn't mean anything. So for the first like couple months of the year, our Sunday mornings are just going to simply be a series of messages going, what is a Christian? What does it mean from the Bible, not from your opinion, not from my opinion, what does it mean to be a follower of Christ? We'll also look at at some point, what does it mean to be a member of a local church? You can say, well, I'm a member of that church. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means I go there. Well, I hope it means more than just you go here, if you're a member. And then we're also going to look at, you know, through the Bible, there's a lot of things in the Bible that says, if you are in Christ, you are fill in the blank, correct? So let's go through the Bible and find out who we are and find out what the Word of God says those who are in Christ are. You say, what do you mean? Well, if you're in Christ, you are part of the beloved, aren't you? You're grafted into the family of God. You are a new creation, a new creature, right? Right? You have a new nature. Do you get what I mean? The Bible, the Bible has a lot to say about what does it mean to be identified with Christ. So let's find out. Oh, by the way, that's also our theme for camp next year for the teenagers. Because if anyone needs it more than anything else, what they're going through in the generation that they live is unlike anything any of us have experienced that are older than that. So let's kind of help them out. And now the, the, it's going to be a different design, different thing, you know, way we go about it. But similar theme, you say, why? I believe this is necessary as a church to minister and live in the day in which God's put us. And by the way, you have been put into this space and time for such a time as this. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but you look back at times in the past, or you look back in the well, I wish I lived back then. Well, guess what? God didn't wish you lived back then. God wished you lived now. And he put you here now for a, such a time as this. You say, but this is a mess. I know. I get it. But guess what Paul would have said about his this? Would you get the idea that Paul thought his this was a mess? Yeah? By the way, he did a lot of the preaching of what it means to be identified in Christ because the people he was dealing with had no clue. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. That's what we're going to be emphasizing. And if you notice... Within the logo, the, the, one of the T's in the identity is a cross, because that's our identity, is, is the cross. Ah, and, and look in the background, you might notice that everything is through the lens of a fingerprint, because your fingerprint identifies you, and identifies you and only you. Usually, no two fingerprints are alike. You say, well, there could be some, yeah, there could be some rear thing, but you know what? By and large, no two fingerprints are alike, right? I just know there's someone out there. Yes, but if I cut his fingerprint off his finger and put it on my finger, then his finger... No, no, okay, I get you, okay? Uh, but it's not. So that, that's where that comes from. So as we continue to go on, um, <clears throat> let's just kind of go over what is taking place in our church in this year, and we'll look towards next year. Um, our general account, our average giving for 2023, so last year, uh, was 5777 and 63 cents. You say, how do you get that? Well, generally how we figure out our averages is we take everything that came in, divide it by 12. And you go, we do our budgets based on averages, not on like, well, you say, why? Because some months things are like, there's some months where I, uh, Brian and I will look at each other and we're like, wow, it's a low month. And he'll look at me and say, but pastor, we go on the averages. Because then some months, all of a sudden, I don't know what happens, but everybody gets paid and gets bonuses at the same time, and the offering just goes, whoo! But when you put it all together and divide it out, that's, that's what it comes to. Uh, and 2024, it's now $6,060.60. So we like 60s this year. I don't know why, but that's what we like. So that means... We've had an increase of $282.97 a month in our general giving. And some people go, oh, that, that's, that's great. We've increased. Well, I don't always want to be the bearer of bad news, but have you noticed the cost of living has increased? 
So that increase basically covers the cost of the increase in liability insurance, the cost of the increase in hiring our church storage set, and the cost of the increase in hiring this spot to park the trailer. So really, we just kind of broke even. But praise the Lord that we're, we're there, okay? That's kind of where we are as a, as a church. Um, then when it comes to uh, some things coming up in the giving wear area, um, you can ask Daniel over there. He runs the computer, and sometimes Dave runs the computer. And uh, that computer was a wonderful computer eight and a half years ago, that laptop. Um, but there are some keys now that you can press the key all you want, and it goes, I don't exist. And um, so we've got a Bluetooth keyboard that we you know, type on to try to extend the life of it uh, a little bit longer. So at some point this year, we're going to need to replace um, that laptop. And have you looked at laptops and things? They're not cheap. When we bought that eight and a half years ago, I think we spent about $1,800 because it does a lot of the things we needed it to do. It runs the screens. It runs different things simultaneously. Uh, to, get, to get a laptop somewhat equivalent to that, in today's day and age, you're looking at $2,500 to $2,700 um, the church has the money in the account. And all that. I'm not saying we're going to go out and buy it tomorrow. I'm just saying as a church, just to be aware, that's an item that, you know, it's just general maintenance. And if we buy a decent one and take care of it like we did, then we probably will be having this conversation in another eight and a half years and, and just do that. So just so you're aware of that. Now, um, the in-ear monitor things that we've talked about, uh, we've actually been looking at trying to hire them. And we've actually found an option that would be cheaper to buy a cheaper set of them than it would be to hire them for a month. And so we'll, we'll look into that a little bit more. We'll, we'll talk to you about that. So just kind of, we've been talking about that for a bit. And um, it would be a massive, so everyone's opinion is different, but it would be a massive help because of the, the echoing in here. And then you wouldn't have to have a fullback because it would be right in your ear. But we'll go into that and we'll look at that later on, but just kind of giving you an idea. Now, in missions giving, in 2023, our average was 1,953.39 a month given to missions. That's what we gave last year to missions, all right? Um, our giving this year is 1,993.74, so we've kind of increased $40.35 a month in our missions giving, which any increase is a good thing. Uh, the thing that's a bit confusing that's what was given, but the faith promise was about $1,100. You say, how do you reconcile that? I don't know. I don't worry about it. God takes care of it. We go based on that. That's what's average coming in. So that means we have some ability to do some things that we're going to propose um, and, and, and have you look at for the next year. Now, outreach. I will be honest with you. In our 10 years of, of New Beginnings Baptist Church, 2024 has been the worst performing year of us as a whole reaching out to people. It really has. You say, why? Every year, except this one, we've put a gospel track invitation into 100,000 plus homes. Okay? This year, um, we've done 30,500 via mailing and only 5,000 giving them out. Up until this year, people would sign out tracks and take them and they would do 500 tracks and come back and do them. And uh, I don't know what's going on, but you're not doing it. So as my encouragement to you is guess what? Do it. All right. And last year I thought, man, I'm going to add where once a quarter we're going to, we hadn't been doing this because our church has been doing so well. And so if our church keeps doing well, we're going to add once a quarter and we're going to do more. And guess what? We added once a quarter. And then when someone, some people went, well, since I go once a quarter as a church, I don't have to go anymore. So let's not do that. All right. Let's, let's get actively involved. And uh, we will talk about that in a minute. So a total of 30,500. Now, uh, we'll be doing about another 35,000 mailing of invitations to our Christmas service and things of that nature. So that number is going to end over 70,000. So, but we've done so much more 
um, mailing than we've done actually going out. And we're going to have the Christmas carols market, so we'll probably give about another 400 there at the Christmas carol market and all that type of stuff. So, okay, but just if you see those numbers compared to what we've been as a church, let's just kind of take that for what it is and uh, give ourselves a good swift kick and say, you know what, we need to get more obedient, we need to get more creative, we need to actually get out and about of doing what you're doing. And I'm saying that because, and I looked at that and I went, why aren't we doing it anymore? And then I thought, hmm, what about me? So guess what? Before I said that to you, in my office I went, hmm, uh, and gave myself my own little good kick and, uh, you know, say, let's, let's go. So uh, don't be, what pastor's mad? Oh, no, no, no. It's, it, as a church, by and large, us all, okay? So let's be encouraged in that way. Uh, 2024, let's set a goal to do a mailing of, say, you know, say, 65,000, but let's set a goal to actually personally give out 35,000 gospel tracts. You say, that's, that's, that's a lot for that. Guess what? We used to do that all the time. We used to. So let's not used to anymore. Let's do so. Okay? Um, so we have a total of at least 100,000. Now, here's the interesting thing, though. We may have done less, but God still keeps adding to the church. And it's interesting, but here's my thing. God will do his part. We are expected to be obediently doing our part, right? And here's what I've learned in life. God rewards obedience. God has a tendency to build more when we obey more. Yes? So let's just keep that in mind and be encouraged in that in the area of outreach. Now, missions. Um, we, we sort of did this last year and with some of the extra missions money. And in Vanuatu, I was talking to Pastor Ishmael, and this blew my mind. This absolutely blew my mind. He said for $1,200, we could sponsor three students to go through Bible college. I wish... $1,200 paid for one year of my Bible college. I was like, what? How do you do that? But they did. So that's an opportunity for us to go, hey, you know what? Let's invest in some people who've given their lives to go and to serve the Lord in places we can't go. And by the way, um, some of those people who've gone to Bible college and are now out and about doing things, they're in places that if you and I went, those islands wouldn't accept us but they accept them. So let's, let's help equip. Let's, let's do that type of stuff. Now, also last year um, in Vanuatu, there was Camp New. And uh, we, we were able to give $1,600 to that to make it so that way it was fully funded. And that way, the 200 and some odd people that came to camp, they charged them nothing to come to camp. And what was it, like 13 some odd people got saved? And so I would say, hey, in missions, let's, let's look at keep, keeping that relationship and, and helping that out and looking for some things that we can, we can sort of do that with. And then um, Andy and Brianna, remember, they're going to be sent out of our church and soon they're going to be going on in deputation. And so we have some excess in our missions about where we could take on another missionary. And if someone grew up at our church... People say, yeah, you're saying that because she's my daughter. No, I'm saying that in spite of the fact that she's my daughter, okay? <laughs> um, if you've known anything about myself and this church and how I do things, you will never hear me get up and ask for something for me, for my family, for anything of that nature. Um, and a matter of fact, any time Brian's come to me and he says, We're, the men have been talking, I said, okay, I'll sit down. And any time that anything's ever been discussed about salaries or anything that you've done for our family, I'm usually sitting right there, and Brian's usually standing right there. And I don't want any part of it. It's, it's the Lord takes care of it, all right? So I'm just saying that as a pastor of someone who grew up in the church, we should be behind them. Just like I would be saying that if your child comes to me and says, I think the Lord wants me to go to Japan, I'd be like, woo, let's help. Let, let's get let's get on board. Let's you know or wherever fill in the blank. Of, it doesn't have to be Japan. It doesn't have to be you know fill in the blank. You get the idea, All right? So we can look at that in the future. Um, after Wednesday night, 
Uh, Brother Shuto kind of laid it out there, didn't he? You were there Wednesday night? He laid it out there about mission trip, didn't he? Some of you were like, yeah, I wasn't listening because I didn't want to go there. All right, so if anyone's interested in mission trips, please see me. I have a list of opportunities that I've been asked. Hey, we have been asked, can we send a team? I specifically asked for Jackson. Um, but can we send a team with Jackson uh, to come help build some buildings in Vanuatu? Ishmael would love us to come. And so if you like to do that type of stuff, see me. I can, I can arrange it for you. I can, I can work it out, and, and we can do that. Um, my, uh, Caitlin has been talking to Shuto and Susanna about taking a mission trip to Japan to experience a different culture. And they began to ask her questions about music. And they were like, <gasps> You play the cello. You do that. So they've asked her if she could come to come at Easter time next year to play the cello in their big Easter musical thing. And then also behind the scenes to be helping with um, transposing music into a computer program that they can put Japanese lyrics to and create like Japanese music. And so there's, there, there's an opportunity. All right. So and, and I could go on. Um, you know, I, I've talked to Brother Panero, and Brother Panero would love for a team to come up and do some letterboxing and some outreach things in Mackay. And I, I don't think any one of our missionaries, if I contact them and said, hey, would you like a team to come help you? I don't think anyone would say no. Usually they're all like, come on. And um, I probably have about three churches in the Philippines who have been trying to get me to come for, like, ages. And so they would have, you know, I'm just saying the opportunities are endless, uh, but you've got to be willing to give up a little bit of time, invest a little bit of money, and uh, as a church, we can help you raise that money. Uh, we can take up an offering for you. We can do some fundraising things for you. We will help you. Uh, when we did take a church missions trip before, we helped raise the funds, and everyone had what they needed to go on the trip. All right? So if you're interested in taking a missions trip, Please see me. We'd love to help you do that. Seeing life and ministry in a different culture changes the way you view things and also gives you a greater appreciation for what you have. All right? So if that's there, there you go. Now, for 2025, we have, uh, you know, we had a monthly calendar. Do we have any of these? Are they over here? And the blue thing. All right. <clears throat> Let me grab this. Here we are. Woo we are introducing something a little bit new. So um, please grab one of these. You don't have to grab it right this second, but I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. Don't fly away. Uh, we, we're, the calendars that we have, we're moving towards something of this nature. It's just called Inside New Beginnings, and it's a little booklet, and when you open it up, um, there is a, it's filled with photos of everything from New Beginnings. And so, if you, as far as I know, everyone that's featured in here, I have something to say, can you, I can use your phone photo. If you don't want me to, let me know. I'll just swap you out for the next printing and just find someone else. All right? And so there's a table of contents. There's an introduction letter um, in there, welcoming people so we can give this to visitors. Um, and then there is October with events taking place in October, the memory verse for October. Now, I understand October is already done, but these are going to be quarterly, so I'm just showing you what it looks like. Then there's November and everything going on in November and November's memory verse. And then you flip it and it's, guess what's next? December, good job, all right. Uh, there's December and all of December's events and, and what's there. And then there's a page that says ways to connect. And so it tells you about our, our growth groups that you're sitting in this morning. It tells you about um, you know, Sunday school classes and church services and Sunday at 1030 and 5 and, and children's church at 1030 and our Bible study and prayer on Wednesday night via Zoom. And, and it also tells you about um, our discipleship that we do. And if you're interested in that, please see us. We'd love to get you hooked into that. And then on the back, there's ways to contact us. And then there's a big QR code in the back. And if you scan that QR code, it'll take you to an option on a, it looks like a, a web option 
that will show you a link to our church's website, a link to our church's Facebook account, Instagram account, and YouTube account. So that way you can scan that one thing, go to there, go to it. If you don't follow the church, on the, I'm not saying you need to be on social media. Uh, whatever your personal thing is, that's fine. If you want to be on it, fine, you know, use it for good. If you don't want to be on it, stay away from it. I don't care. But if you are on it, follow the church's pages and, and get some things from them and some updates from them. Um, but that's all doable by scanning that one thing. So that's Inside New Beginning. So you get one of these a quarter. And it will tell you events for three months' time period. All right? Make sense? Now, I'm trying to be quick here, but I don't think we're going to make it through. Uh, Bible reading schedules are available. Tracks available for letterboxing. Um, we're going to, instead of quarterly, um, I've, I've got a plan to do it every other month. So every two months, we'll do it. Um, and the... In the ministry things, there is those dates there already laid out. Um, you can meet up with someone, go some other time. In August, we're going to look at doing a Saturday Rejoice Ladies Retreat um, again. And when we do that, um, we'll be an unusual thing because we'll have a small missions team from my sending church, the church that I grew up in. And so uh, one of the young ladies that's coming, um, I taught her in like children's church. And so it's pretty cool uh, to come. And I think one of the young men that's coming, if he's still the young man that's coming, will be the grandson of the man who led my mom to the Lord. And so it would be, be interesting to have him. Um, should be some interesting times. And I'll just have to remind him what they call me um, because they've known me too long, okay? And uh, no asking for stories, all right? No, no stories. Um, anyways, like, there... Then what I also like to do for the men, if you've noticed, we've had a progression. We've had Bible reading, where you sign up, you read the scripture reading. Then we've progressed to some of those men who do the scripture reading now preach the last Sunday night of each month. Yes? If you're here on Sunday nights, you get that. The next progression of what we'd like to do is develop once a month to have a men's leadership meeting where... Um, those who are interested in being trained or mentored uh, come. We have a book that we all read, and then we, we, you go out, you go home, and you read the chapter, you make some notes, you think about it, you come back the next month, and we sit down and we discuss it. And then we also go, okay, now how can we implement that in our church? And, and kind of challenging us and helping us to kind of grow um, as, as men in the church and to develop into... Not just leaders in the church, but leaders in our wherever we are, wherever God's put us, and kind of kind of be helpful in that way. So that's that'll be there. Um, we'd like to have another church family fun day. Anyone remember when we went to Aussie World? That was fun, wasn't it? Some of you are like, mm. hey, I think it was hilarious to sit there and watch everybody do silly stuff, and then everyone thought it was funny to make fun of me, and so everyone called me a chicken. You won't go on that, Pastor. You're a chicken. I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll balk and flap my wings right here in the front of the park. And then someone said to me, no, you won't. Oh, yes, I did. All right. I ain't getting one on those, some of those rides. But we'll have a good time. Uh, if you want to go to Aussie World, if you want to go to, to Dream, one of those places, or if there's another place that you would suggest that we go as a church, let me know. We'll, we'll look at it. All right? Um, there's, there could be an unofficial family camp. You say, what do you mean? We've had a family camp before, haven't we? Well, this year, my wife, and everyone knows my wife's fondness for camping, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I heard you found out. <laughs> it, is, it is not exaggerated, okay? <laughs> it's not exaggerated. So here's what my wife has said to me. Uh, sometime next year, I'm going to be taking Katie to Bible college, and I'll be away for a couple of weeks. If the church wants to go camping again, that would be a wonderful time for you guys to do it. Well, I'm not here, so I don't feel guilty about not coming. So when we get the dates that she's going to be gone, I'll let us know, and we can plan a time that if you want to come along to go camping for a couple days as a church, uh, we'll do it, but it's not going to be like an official like church thing, um, but we will let everyone in the church know, and if you'd like to join on, you can come on, and you know, we'll just do that so that way we can camp and I can still be happy, and she can be happy. And those of you who want to camp can be happy. 
Yes? Makes sense? All right. Um, ministry involvement booklets right here. We'll give those out in a moment. You can read through those over the next couple of weeks. Pray about getting involved. Involved. All right. So that is everything. All right. So uh, that's kind of like our goals and plans and what we're looking at as a church. And uh, I'm excited because it's another year, Lord willing, to serve him and to make an impact in people's lives and, and do all those types of things. And so if you're interested in finding out what ministries are available and things of that nature, just grab one of these. Uh, please get one of these, read them, read over them, pray about them. Not next Sunday, because next Sunday we're not having growth groups because we're having a forced time to fellowship with people who are abandoning us. Um, not that we want them to abandon us. We'd rather just take their passports away and have them not leave. Uh, but we've tried all we can, and they have things called family, like, you know, family that they probably should go see. Um, but that's also known as the hunters going away, you know. Felt, you know what I mean? Like that type of thing. Uh, so we have that next Sunday, and then the following Sunday, we have Ministry Involvement Sunday. So it gives you two, two weeks to read through that, pray about how you'd be, in, you know, get involved in the church and, and plug in, and, um, and that's all there and ready and available for you. So hopefully that can give you a little bit of a vision of, you know, some things we can do, both to build relationships in the church and to get to know each other and have some fun and all that type of stuff, but also it's a lot of fun to serve God together. All right? A lot of good relationships are built while you serve God side by side, shoulder to shoulder with people. And I encourage you to get involved. And so we'll be looking at next year, what is our identity in Christ? And let the Bible define us, not our culture or those around us. And, and what is our identity as a church? And let the Bible define that, not our culture and what's around us. All right? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to be here this morning. And Lord, I pray that we would be encouraged at all that you're doing in us and, and amongst us as a church. And Lord, we look forward with great excitement to serving you. Lord willing, should you tear your coming for another year. And Lord, we pray that you help us give us a fresh vision and excitement about what you could do if we could just fully dive in and be obedient and be a part of what you're doing here at New Beginnings Baptist Church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Um.